Hello guys and welcome to BT Watch. With the holidays just around the corner and the year having nearly come to an end for watch enthusiasts, that means it's time to look back on 2023 and reflect upon some of our favorite watches of the year. So far, we've done our favorite budget picks and our picks for the best sports watches of the year, but now it's time to get a bit formal. From time-only classics to the complicated and the jewel-encrusted, here are our picks for the best dress watches of 2023. When I started hearing rumblings that Cartier would release the tank Normale at Watches and Wonders, I was overjoyed. While Cartier can be predictable in rolling out reissues of their previous watches, when the original is so good, it's hard to complain. With that in mind, this is one of the watches I've been looking forward to the most. While vintage Cartier continues to perform strongly on the secondary market, there hasn't been a watch that has tapped into the vintage mindset of the Mason as much as the new tank Normale. But where the pebble was fan service, a watch only easily processed by deep lovers of vintage Cartier, here, the brand has made a watch that is digestible and desirable by old fans and newcomers alike. That said, over the year, I've slightly changed my tune on one thing. The real sleeper hit from the many Normale releases was likely the watch in yellow gold on a strap. With silver hands, the platinum watch's dial suffers from legibility issues that aren't present on the new gold Normale and on a strap. The yellow gold version is both more affordable and more in keeping with how you'd see vintage Normales on the market. No matter the direction you go, however, I don't think you can go wrong. This is the quintessential dress watch, 100 years ago or today. Just like I said in my effusive hands-on review, there are still a few things that I would change to make this more practical and wearable with a better respect for the original Normale. But the introduction of a production brick bracelet alone without a massive premium, was enough to sway me as a lover of vintage Cartier. At Watches and Wonders this year, Rolex did something it rarely ever does. It released an entirely new segment of watches, retiring the Cellini line and introducing the 1908. The latter serves as a spiritual successor to the Cellini, but with an eye toward the brand's historical penchant for making core dress watches. What's more, it was part of a new push by the brand to begin including exhibition case backs into some of its models, the Daytona being the other. But the 1908 is, and there's hardly another way to put it, hot. I may be a Rolex guy, but I'm also not much of a dress watch guy, and the 1908 really spoke to me. The design of the numerals for the 3912, including the Open 9, and the classic approach to the small seconds subdeal give it a look that is almost exclusively dressy. At 39mm, it's a tad on the large size, but it still wears so well, especially with the heft of the precious metals. My pick is undoubtedly the yellow gold with the black dial, because it's a matte black. Something that just screams vintage, and something you don't often see on a dress watch. This is my pick all the way. Very rarely does a watch brand do precisely what enthusiasts want. But this year, Choppard released the LUC 1860 that so many, myself included, have wanted for a while. The updated LUC takes what was already nearly a perfect dress watch, the original 1860 introduced in 1997, and evolves it just enough. First, it kept the essential parts of the 1860 36mm case, Gillick dial, and that beautiful in-house COSC certified micro-rotor movement. But then Choppard made a few updates. Most importantly, it got rid of that 6 o'clock date window to make for a dial that's simple and balanced. Choppard then decided to execute the modern 1860 in a steel case, for the first time, with a salmon copper dial. The new LUC 1860 is different enough from the original that it doesn't feel like a reissue, but an evolution of the original from 1997. This is about as close as it gets to the platonic ideal of a modern, dressy watch. Nowadays, so many brands are beholden to supposed commercial constraints buyers want bigger watches and date windows, not to mention that they want sport, not dress, or so we're told. But sometimes it takes an independent, family-run brand like Chopper to come along and break all these supposed notions. The Choppard LUC 1860 is, objectively, the best dress watch of 2023. To me, it's the best watch of 2023. As a casual kind of guy who basically has season tickets to anything in titanium, 
my need for a dress watch is admittedly limited. Despite this, I do have such a fondness for the category. This year, JLC released an enticing spin on the Reverso tribute by adding a chronograph to one side of their beloved dress watch. The result forms another example of what I like best about the world of the Reverso. Those models that have a beautiful dress watch on one side of the flippable case, while the other offers some sort of complication or more fanciful execution of the time. The tribute chronograph is truly a two watches in one kind of creation as the dressier dial is time only while the other side offers a very GLC take on a chronograph, with a skeletonized dial that features a retrograde 30-minute chronograph counter. If I were lucky enough to have one, I'd be looking for excuses to dress up. Here's hoping they expand a line to include an option in yellow gold. With its modern meets Bauhaus-inspired design ethos, sophisticated in-house movements, and formal yet unfussy selection of watches that lean towards the dress category, Nomo's Glashut is a brand that I can't help but have a soft spot for. If my previous pick didn't make it clear enough, I like a watch that is unafraid to play with color, either in extreme forms or in the simplicity of a color dial, which is very 2023 of me, I might add. When the independent German brand unveiled its latest update on its square-shaped Tetra series earlier this year, my eye was immediately drawn to the light pink model. It's reasonably affordable. It's just the right amount of quirky. Its 33mm sizing is a great option for my small wrist, and well, is pink. It checks all my boxes of what I think a dress watch should be.